Rabbi Ben Packer visiting from Jerusalem Heritage House in East Jerusalem. What are you experiencing it from Israel with regard to the direction of the U.S. Middle East policy under President Trump? Uh, there have already been serious changes since uh, President Trump took over. Um, I talk, I talk about three of them uh, right now. One of them is that President Trump, of course, that's everybody knows, said one state, two states, whatever, uh, whatever the parties themselves are interested in. This has been a desire from the Israeli government uh, for, for many, many years that the parties themselves should decide what's going to happen and be helped by outsiders, but not dictated to how things will run. President Trump, in a clear change of policy, is saying he's not interested in dictating policy. He's interested in assisting. That's number one. Number two, the region. The region. Historically, there's been an idea that if just the Israeli-Palestinian conflict could be solved, the entire region would turn into a utopian society. Obviously, this is ridiculous, but this has been the way governments have looked at this in the past. President Trump very clearly saying it's more of a regional issue. We need to defeat ISIS. We need to contain, we need to contain the Shiite uh, threat to the Sunnis and everybody else. And this is much more in line with how Israel has looked at the problems for many years, saying if we could all work together and solve regional problems, then eventually we can solve uh, smaller problems. Number three, the State Department. The State Department has always been a thorn in Israel's side. From the very founding of the State of Israel, the Secretary of State threatened to resign. Uh, from then until now, the State Department has always been a problem. Now we have President Trump very clearly antagonistic with the State Department, especially with the career politicians who are there uh, and the bureaucrats. And um, as of now, it looks like the State Department is being cleaned out for the first time possibly ever uh, by Donald Trump, by the Secretary of State. And this is, certainly has Israelis looking to a bright future. This is the Israeli perspective. How do you suppose it looks from the Egyptian perspective? Uh, from the Egyptian perspective, I think things look much better. Uh, the previous administration, of course, allowed Hosni Mubarak to fall. Uh, this created a huge window for ISIS and other Islamic radicals to uh, op basically open warfare against Egypt. Uh, of course, Egypt has been fortunate to now have uh, al-Sisi running the country. Uh, but but uh, certainly there was a, probably a fear of a continued uh, Obama policy and a much, hap much happier with the Trump policies. How about the potential for a, a regional peace with the uh, Sunni states? Well, certainly it's a better chance than ever before. Uh, with the Shiite threat that is faced by the Sunni uh, Muslims throughout the region, whether it's in Syria, whether it's in Iraq, whether it's in Saudi Arabia, Yemen, uh, Lebanon, it's basically everywhere. Um, it is in the Sunnis' interest to seek allies. And with Israel being the only other military power in the region, it makes the most sense to go in it together. Um, they might not say this publicly right now, but it's clearly going on privately. And it's probably only a matter of time before it's more public. So your Jerusalem Heritage House is in East Jerusalem, which is largely Arab populated. Is that right? Uh, our neighborhood is overwhelmingly majority Arab right now, but it wasn't historically. So Arafat and Abbas, the Palestinian uh, Liberation Authority or Palestinian Authority uh, leadership, have been, in, in times when they've been in crisis, they start terror against Israelis. Uh, yeah, that's exactly what we saw in the what's called stabbing intifada. Clearly, uh, Abu Mazen, the head of the Palestinian Authority, made statements that were seen by others as uh, encouragement to commit terrorist attacks. And the result were many terrorist attacks. Thank God they weren't very successful in general. But uh, it, there were some, some very sad uh, consequences and clearly a result of his, uh, of his instigation. So... If the U.S. administration, unlike under Obama, it would consider now uh, not pushing for a, a, a second uh, or a, a Palestinian sovereignty, what's the risk to Israelis? Well, the, the risk is, is that the Palestinian Authority will be replaced with something worse, something like Hamas, something like ISIS, something Salafi, something like that. Uh, this is a risk. Uh, however, there's also the possibility of moderate uh, Palestinians living in their own villages who simply are looking out for their best interest working with Israel. This is how things happened before Oslo and there's no reason why it can't happen again in the future with even better results.